So, today we are talking about polynomials. Before we can define a polynomial, though, we need to define a, another vocab word, a term. Okay? So, in math, when we refer to a term, we mean a math expression composed of a coefficient. Do you just know this off the top of your head? Yeah. And or a variable or variables being multiplied together. So, some examples of terms would be, oh, like 2xy. That's a single term. So, it has a number, and it has, in this case, two variables, but they're all being multiplied together. You don't have to have all of these pieces. You could have just a number. You don't have to have any variables, and it still counts as a term. So, another example of a term might be um, 14. That's a term. This one just doesn't happen to have any variables. That's okay. Still counts as a term. I don't have to have, well, we always have a coefficient. Coefficient is just the number in the front. But if it's a one, we don't usually write it, right? So I could have like x to the third. That's a term. There's just no number in front of, well, there is a number in front of it. It's just a one and we don't write it, okay? So as long as I have one of these math expressions and I'm just multiplying everything together, doesn't matter how many pieces there are. I could have, oh, I don't know, 15 variables. As long as it's all multiplication, it counts as one term. Does that make sense? And that could be raised to all different variables. So let's do one more weird one. Say I had something like, oh, I don't know, negative 85, x to the 15th, y to the 4th, z to the 21st, a to the 5th. That would count as one term. It's all being multiplied together. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, okay. So that's a term. So then a polynomial is just a string of one or more of these terms by addition or subtraction. So I just would link them all together. So if I added all these together, I would have a four-term polynomial. Okay? So, and then we classify polynomial. Does everybody have this right now? Can I move up? Yeah? Okay. So polynomials. One or more terms. being added or subtracted from each other. So some examples of polynomials are um, x plus y. That would have two terms in it. x was one of them, y is one of them. Um, another polynomial might be x squared minus 4x plus 10. How many terms would that polynomial have? Three. Three, yeah. It still counts as a polynomial if you only have one term. So, I don't know, 4x would still count as a polynomial. It's still under that umbrella. Yep. You factor? Yeah, that's what Yes. We, yeah, we'll be getting there. <laughs> Good. All right. So these are polynomials. And then we classify polynomials in two different ways. One, by how many terms there are. And then another way is by degree. So let me explain what a degree is. 
Has everybody written this down so far? Oh, sorry. I don't mean to be going too fast. I just get excited when I'm talking about polynomials. <laughs> Well, it's a one-term polynomial. I know, but see how I said one or more terms? So it can be just a single term by itself. It still counts as a polynomial. It's just a one-term one. Yeah, you could think of it that way. All right, so now let's talk about degree of a polynomial. So the degree of a polynomial is pretty easy. It's just the highest exponent that you have in the whole thing. Highest exponent of any term is the degree of the polynomial. So for example, if I gave you the polynomial, oh, I don't know, x plus 3x squared minus 5x to the eighth. If I ask you what the degree of this polynomial is, you just look at the exponents, and whatever the highest exponent is, that's your answer. Eight. This would be an eighth degree polynomial. Uh-huh. Yeah. My mom said she only sees like the weekly Oh, yeah, okay. All right. I don't know if that's good or bad for you guys. <laughs> I guess if you have a good grade, it's bad for you. If you have a bad grade, it's good for you. True. That's kind of a bummer, though. I thought that they could see your grades. And sometimes the grade can be a little bit misleading. Because if you were, like, say you're about to retake a quiz or something, and they see, uh, I don't know. I thought that they could see him. But anyway, so um, we talked about degree. Now we do have to talk about standard form of a polynomial. Standard form of a poly. So uh, when you write a polynomial in standard form, you're always going to want to do this. So you're going to want to get in the habit of always putting your answers in standard form. Usually it's just going to come out of habit, OK? So to write a polynomial, yes, this is what you were talking about. First, you're going to put them in order alphabetically first, though. So if you have more than one variable, okay, you want to start with whatever one comes alphabetically first. So if there's more than one variable, start with the first one alphabetically. Okay, this will make a little bit more sense as we do an example, okay? Out of, let's say you have a whole bunch of them that have an A in it, okay? So out of those terms that have an A in it, now you want to order them based off of their exponent. So if I have an a to the fifth, for example, I put that before an a to the third. Wouldn't you just add them together to simplify the problem? No, because the terms, I have to have like terms in order to be able to add them. So for if I go back here, this x squared minus 4x plus 10, this is in standard form. I only have x's. So I deal with them first, and then I have the highest exponent first, and then I work my way down. And this one is really x to the 0, so that's in order. But I can't combine these two, 
Because they're not what we call like terms. But what if it was just X squared minus X? Would it still not be a like term? Correct. They, like terms have to be the same variable raised to the same exponent. So if it was like 2X plus 3X, sure, that's 5X. You would combine them. But if it's X squared plus 5X, there's nothing I can do. I'm going to get as far as I can, okay? So if there's more than one variable, I'll start with the first one alphabetically. Uh, and then out of those, order them by highest degree to lowest. And then you will simply repeat for all other variables. Let me give you a good example. Let's say we had Okay, so if I needed to put this polynomial in standard form, I have more than one variable, I have A's and B's. A's come first, okay? So any term that has an A in it will come before any term that doesn't have an A in it. Does that make sense? Doesn't matter what the exponents are. If I have B to the hundredth, it doesn't matter. If it has an A in it, it's gonna come first. So. I start off, I look at my A's. So out of the terms that have an A in it, I have one, two, three. The first three have an A in it, right? Everybody agree? So these three are gonna come before these two, no matter what. Now out of these three, I look at the exponents on the A, and I want the highest one first. Yes, that's my first term out of the whole thing. It's first alphabetically, and it's the highest exponent. So my first term should be negative A to the third. Okay, so that one's taken care of. Now out of these two, who do you think comes next? Yes, because it's a to the second power. This is only a to the first. I don't care about the x one on the b, it doesn't matter. I don't even look at the b's yet. I'm going through all the a's. I have an a squared that's gonna come before an a to the first. So my next one should be five a squared. Then I'll have a b squared. Now that I have taken care of all the terms with an A in it, now I would move down to the B's. And I would do the repeat the same process. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. So like you wouldn't be able to separate the A B squared? Nope. Oh, okay. Because it's one term, they stick together. So now if I had multiple terms with a B in it, I would start with the highest exponent of the B and work my way down. I only happen to have the one, so that one stays. And then any numbers, these are called constants, by the way, because they don't have a variable attached to them. So if it's just a number, they always go at the end. So that would be rewriting that crazy thing in standard form. What if the, wait, wouldn't it be plus b to the sixth, then plus b to the b squared? No, because he has an a in him. If it has an A, all the terms with an A will come before any of the ones with the, just a B in it, no matter what the exponent of the B is. This could be B to the 10,000th, it doesn't matter. If he has an A, he's first. So does that make sense, standard form? And I mean this, you don't have to worry too much about this because as we do it, we'll be doing our problems out and we'll be writing our answer in standard form anyway. You just gotta get in the habit of it, but we will. Okay, so that's standard form of a polynomial. The only other two things we have to talk about are um, 
naming them by degree and number of terms. Okay, so let's see. We're gonna make a little chart eventually. But before we do that, let's throw down what the names are. So to name a polynomial based on, let's do degree first. So if you have a polynomial that is degree zero, it's called a constant. I just mentioned that to you. So if it's degree zero, think about that. That means the variable is raised to the zero power. What happens when we see something raised to the zero power? Swap. Yeah, we just cross it out, it's just one, so it's just gonna leave the number behind. It's just gonna be a number like 17, 41. Those are your constants. If it's degree one. Oh yeah, so let's put an example. Uh, 14. So here's our degree, name, and example. But if you raise 14 to the zero power, that's just it's, the degree is always on a variable, never on a number. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I have something raised to the first power, it's called linear. An example of that might be something like, oh, I don't know, Yes, I was thinking 2x. See how x is being raised to the first power? So I would call that a linear term. If the degree is two. This one's weird because the word makes you think four. Yeah, it's quadratic. And I know you think quad means four, and usually it does, but not in this case. Quadratic just means to the second power. So like negative uh, five x squared. That would be a quadratic, because you're squaring it. Anybody happen to know the one for three? Oh, I knew it, I just. Starts with C. Oh, oh, um. Cubic, yeah. I was gonna say that. <laughs> That's right, cubic. So I don't know, let's say you had 47x to the third. The number out in front, I hope you're getting, it has nothing to do with it. It's only the exponent that we're looking at. x to the first, x squared, x to the third, and this would be x to the zero, we just don't write it. And um, there's two more that we do. So to the fourth, this one does make sense. You know it? Quartic? Yes, quartic. Like a quart of milk. There's four quarts in a gallon. So 1,089 x to the fourth. That would be quartic. And the last one, go ahead. Quintic? Yes, quintic. If someone has five babies, that's quintuplets. Quintic. So I had five kids, I would die. <laughs> That's a lot. I can barely handle one. You play one, you get five. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. So now all we have left to do is name them by number of terms. This is actually a little bit easier because there's only three of them. So to name a poly based on number of terms. I bet you're gonna remember these words too once you see them. Number of terms, then I'll give you a name, then I'll give you an example. You can't have zero terms, because then you don't have a number at all, okay? So the fewest number of terms you can have is one. That, once I say it, you're gonna know all the other ones, I bet. Does anybody remember? One term is called A. Starts, oh, wait, no, no, good sorry. guess. It starts with an M. Oh, monomial. Yes, monomial. 
So an example of a monomial is anything that's just one term. So like, um, I don't know, 2xy, that was one term. Terms I call chunks of numbers all the time. It's one chunk. 2xy, they're all being multiplied together. That's one chunk. So a two-term thingy is called a binomial. Bye. Bye, Felicia. Today is hazelnut. All the the Girl Scout cookie ones are gross. Oh no, they're so good. Have you ever tried raspberry mocha? The anything with chocolate, I think the chocolate is way too overpowering. Mm hmm So I steer clear of all the. All right, a three-term polynomial is called a trinomial. Um, I honestly don't even know what it is because after that we just call it a um, yeah we just say a four term polynomial a five term polynomial a 17 term polynomial so all you need to know is the first three and then four or more just say um, whatever number po uh, term polynomial So, for example, if I gave you, oh, I don't know, negative x to the 12th minus x squared plus 3x plus 2, how many terms is that? Four. four. That would be a four-term polynomial. By the way, uh, degree, we only went up to five, so this would be a degree 12, right? So then if it's past five, you just say 12th degree. Four term poly, 12th degree if I asked you. Sure, I don't know the name of it. I would just call it 10,000th degree. So, uh, which one are we in here? Three more minutes? Yeah, we have like two more minutes. <laughs> Okay, now listen, I'm changing the directions a tiny bit. So we're only going to do one through twelve. But listen to what I want you to do. It says name each polynomial by degree and number of terms. I want you to add and write it in standard form. So for example, number one is actually already in standard form. If you look, all the exponents start at the highest and they go down. How many terms does this thing have? Four and it's degree what? So we would call this a quintic four-term polynomial. The third one is a sixth degree. How many terms? One. So it's a monomial. And obviously it's already in standard form because there's only one term, so I don't have to do anything to it. But something like number seven, you do need to rewrite that because that's not in standard form. But that would be a quintic trinomial. You see that? Degree five, and there's three of them. But I want you to rewrite it. So if you rewrote it correctly, this guy needs to come next, and then the minus four V at the end. And then you tell me it's a quintic trinomial. Okay, that's it. So you only have to do one through 12 and I already did three of them for you. But do make sure any of the ones that need to be rewritten that you do that, okay?